Hello and welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody. Now, I've been having so much fun with the Model 84 Juno 106 emulation by Softube and in particular, Matt Johnson's wonderful presets. So I'd love to demonstrate them for you today. So what we're doing today is a demonstration of the SoftTube Model 84 using the presets programmed by Matt Johnson. So yes, this is one of the very many Juno emulations available. This one I think is one of the better ones. It certainly has a certain special, dare I say, warmth, magic to the sound. But what we're doing today specifically, if I open the preset browser, we'll use these presets as a starting point anyway, but I am tweaking them during the demonstrations. But I'm going to click on Matt Johnson, the tag here, to get up all of his patches. SoftTube commissioned him to collaborate with them and work on creating a lot of fabulous patches. And he's done an amazing job. Not only is Matt an amazing keyboard player, but he's obviously a great sound designer as well. For those of you that don't know, Matt is the keyboard player for Jamaraquai, but he also, as if, as if that's not enough, he has a fantastic YouTube channel where he shares demonstrations of synthesizers, sound design, and the part that I enjoy the most, he uh, does a lot of uh, keyboard technique tutorials, which I really enjoy. The man is a, is a gem got a lot of really interesting knowledge to share. So thank you, Matt, for all that you have done for the keyboard community. Okay, this is one of Matt's electric piano sounds. <laughs> We have another of Matt's pianos, this time with a little bit of gentle LFO in the background, as you can hear. choice not to include any of the built-in chorus on the sound, but still sounding pretty fat to me. So here on the screen you see the synthesizer in all of its glory. The thing about the Juno, it's always been a pretty simple synthesizer and SoftTube have respected that. They haven't added any new features or anything to the synthesizer really. This is pretty much as it was on the hardware, with a very few small exceptions that I'll show you later to enhance the playability of it. But this is a single oscillator synth with a DCO, a digital controlled oscillator. The thing that always puzzles me a little bit about the Juno is it's a single oscillator synth. It's considered single oscillator, but you can have... If we just fiddle around with this sound a little bit. You can have pulse width wave, pulse wave, 
sawtooth wave and a sub oscillator. And you can mix those all together. So it's somewhat of a hybrid single oscillator synth, perhaps. I've always been a little bit confused. You've got three different waveforms that you can mix together, although you don't have control over each waveform and you can't detune them. It is actually three different waveforms or oscillators going on at the same time, I suppose. And then that is thickened up by the chorus, which we have down here. Without any chorus, you get a sound like this. Still sounds pretty thick and lush, I think, on this particular emulation, but switch on chorus one, see what happens. Chorus two. of an ensemble effect, really nice. You can't, on the emulation, click both Chorus 1 and Chorus 2 down together, and in the manual it says that that wasn't possible on the original hardware. Now I have a Juno 6, and you can definitely press both buttons down, but perhaps that wasn't possible on the 106. I don't know, it's been a long time since I've had a 106. Uh, do let me know in the comments if that's correct or not. Can you really not press both Chorus 1 and 2 down together for a real mega lush rich effect? That was certainly possible on the Juno 6 anyway. Here we have a matte steel guitar. Let's take a listen to this with the arpeggiator. The arpeggiator on the Arturia, I should mention. entitles this neon lead, but it also is a pretty mighty bass. Try putting some chorus on this. simple synthesizer of course but certainly not simple in the sounds sounds pretty mighty it's got one filter that you run everything through and one envelope that can be amp and filter envelopes together although you can make the amp envelope into more of an organ shaped envelope and then use this envelope just to control the filter, just to modulate the filter. It sounds like this. stuff.
wasn't finding the patches that I wanted. A bit confused there for a second, but I did sort it alphabetically, and now the ones that I previously played and enjoyed are coming up here as tagged or starred. So let's play through some of these in this particular order then. This is 45 Mercy. Love that slightly uh, oscillating sound there on the pitch of the oscillator. Yeah, nice. Nice work, Matt. This one is very true to the original. There are no other built-in effects, so if you want to use reverb or delay, you'll have to use an external plugin for that. I'm not using anything today. You're just hearing the raw sound of the 84 with no added effects, apart from, of course, the inbuilt chorus. There are a few enhancements. If we click over here, we get a little extra panel, but these are mainly related to performance. Uh, the original hardware wasn't velocity sensitive. It didn't have any touch responsiveness to the keys. This one does, you can dial in which parameter you want to control with the filter. For example, the filter with velocity. Just turn this one down a bit. For example, we can do the same with the after touch and just a few settings here to affect the chorus and a unison mode. Again, nice use of the LFO to modulate the oscillator pitch. Nice uh, idea of that. I'll use that in my own presets. It sounds pretty good. simple but really effective. I dig that. The GUI is very nice, one of the best, I think. It does have a very skeuomorphic design to look like the original hardware, I guess. It would be quite nice, I think, to have a option in the menus to have a flat style of GUI as well, so that it would be more legible and clear to read, even if you were to shrink the size of the GUI. Yes, another great thing about this plugin is that it does have a fully resizable GUI. So it will work on all kinds of screens and eyesights. You can, if you want, switch the display of the keys on and off in the settings. Hmm. Really interesting bell. Good work, Matt, on that one. Touch.
take a tip from Matt there to use a bit of LFO in my patches. Sounds really awesome. One thing that does puzzle me slightly is that this particular emulation does not have an arpeggiator built in. So I've been using the arpeggiator here on the Arturia key step instead. Now my Juno 6, of course, had an arpeggiator. That was a one of the lovely features of the synthesizer that I liked to use back in the day. Perhaps the Juno 106 didn't have an ARP. But anyway, Softube have chosen not to include one here. But it would have been quite nice to have that perhaps as one of the enhancement parameters here on this side panel. One thing you've seen me doing during my demonstrations is to use these knobs here that I've mapped up. The first one I've mapped up to filter. We have resonance as well. And the third one is the amount of filter sent to the envelope. The fourth knob I've sent to the release, assigned it to the release. Super easy, you just use the MIDI learn feature here that's built into the software, so that's really great. I've only got four knobs at my disposal here, although I can have access to other banks, but I've just mapped up the four most important parameters for me as I'm doing a performance. Got a beautiful string pad here, check this one out. end on that. If you are interested in picking up this plugin and trying out Matt's presets yourself, then head over to the SoftTube website, of course. They do have regular sales without any discount. It's quite an expensive Juno. It's one of the more expensive plugins coming in, I think, at about $150, perhaps a little bit more even. But they seem to regularly have sales, and right now they are having a Halloween special as well, so you can get it at about half price, I think. I've seen it even cheaper, I think. So do keep an eye on their website if this is a plugin that you want to pick up. Another thing I should mention is that you will also need to have an iLock, either one of the physical USB dongles, or as what I've done, and it's quite painless actually, just to install the PACE anti-piracy, sorry for the plosive, PACE anti-piracy software 
application on your PC and use a virtual iLock dongle. Seems to work pretty well for me. Thought I'd finish off with a nice bass preset here. Hope you enjoyed the demos. <laughs> So that concludes my demonstration and review of the Model 84 software. Big shout out and respect to Matt. If you haven't checked out his channel, then head over and take a look. You won't be disappointed. I'll see you all next time. Cheerio.